Hello. <laughs> and welcome Hello. to Needles at the Ready. I'm Kevin. I'm Ray. <laughs> Today is Saturday, March 2nd, 2024. This is episode 105 of our YouTube channel where we talk about knitting, crocheting, yarn dyeing, yarn buying, and all the things that go with that. So, That's right. Welcome back to any returning viewers and welcome to any new viewers. Thanks for joining us today. Lovely to have you all here. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. That's okay. It. So thanks. Um, I'll take it from here. Thank you. I have you. nothing to really say. Um, <clears throat> it's been two weeks since our last podcast. It's been a fortnight. It has. Yep. We're back on schedule. Schedule. Yeah. We're, why were we off? Yeah. Didn't we podcast on a Sunday last time? Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had yeah. gone to Skeen. <coughs> yes, correct. had a correct. lovely time with the ladies. Correct. We did. Um, so yeah, we're back. It's Saturday. Uh, it's pretty dreary here in, in, uh, in old Stratford. In New England. In New England. We're having, I mean, it's going to be 50 degrees, which is great, but it's a little bit, uh, dark and rainy, drizzly. Yeah. Okay. So enough of that drizzling on. So what did we, what do we do usually? Do we do admin stuff first? Do yeah. We talk about. So let's do admin stuff. So we have currently our, oh, kid along. Like, we do we have our kit along. So kit yeah. along runs until the end of this month. Yep. And the idea of that was just to make something from a kit that you have or recently purchased. Right. Uh, I'm working are... on my toft sheep. I'm not going to show it today, but I am struggling a little bit with his, uh, with the hair all over his body. Those little curls. Maybe I'll start mine today. You should. It was a lot of fun. They, okay. This is... I'm in a, a little bit of a slog fest, so I'm going to switch my crochet hook. I probably should have brought it up so you know what I'm talking about, but I didn't. Um, if I get up to hmm. P or something, maybe I'll grab it because, you know, that's usually how I work. I will start it today. The reason I hadn't started it is because... Oh, I did another kit. There you go. Because I had not entered the yarn into my stash, but it is in my stash now on Ravelry. Oh, so great. Perfect. That's what I was... I'm pretty confident. I'll check. I'm currently working through a kit, so I will show that uh, as a work in progress. Did not do much knitting this past couple of weeks. Um, in addition to that, we are going to be starting a brand new knit along. This is going to be a knit along with a pattern attached to it. So um, we here in the the states, I think, with the exception of only two states, um, okay, do yes. a uh, like daylight savings time and standard you know, clocks, we switch our clocks back and forth in the spring and in the fall. So um, we will be springing ahead and setting our clocks forward uh, next Sunday, I think. Yeah, the 10th. The 10th. So starting on March 10th, we're going to be starting a knit along. Um, and we thought it would be really fun to do a clockwork knit along. Get it? The time change clocks, moving wow. the clocks. Wow. We're wow. so right? smart. I know. So um, Kevin and I are both, this will transition to what we're wearing, we're both knitting the clockwork shawl by Stephen West. Kevin's going to be pulling it up. That's how efficient we are. Um, I have never knit one. Kevin's knit two of them. He gave me one as a gift. This is the clockwork. Mm -hmm. um, it also looks like this. Nice. It's a super easy to wear scarf, shawl. Um, it is pretty, it is long, which is really great. And you said that this is just slip stitches or yeah. cables so or something? This is Talk garter. About it. All right. So it is garter stitch. You cast on here, if I remember. Well, you cast on from one side. You cast on here. Okay. And this is just slip stitches. This is garter. You do have quite a lot of stitches on your needle. So it can, especially when you get to the end, because you have some increases. So you have more stitches at the end than you do at the beginning. So it is quite a bit of knitting for now, it's kind of like knit one side at a time or do you no. knit the whole thing okay whole thing so it is very much like knitting a scarf but how pretty it is a really fun um design so yeah. this is all knit out of brooklyn tweed i want to say in humpback and cadet possibly oh wow, good for you and it's a dk weight pattern right no it's fingering weight it's a fingering weight pattern this is knit so this is one that i also knit I know the orange is Shibui, which I have some more in my stash somewhere. And the green, I want to say it, it may be an Isager. Iseg, oh. I think. So it's um, it's it's a very easy to wear 
like scarf. You can wear it a couple of different ways underneath the jacket um, or as like a little accent, which is great. Cause like I said, it's 50 degrees here. So um, perfect for the transition type of weather. Um, you can wear it as like a scarf where you can pull the, pull it through because it's, uh, it's long enough. So you can kind of make a little, yeah, you know, pull through like scarf knot type of situation. Um, anyway, it's, it's one of my favorites to wear, especially when you have a jacket on, um, to keep your neck warm or like I said, a, like a transition like a transition piece. Yeah, and we're actually using it as an opportunity to make some samples yeah. with my yarn. So Ray's going to be using... Um, steampunk. That's one of our most popular ones. Dreamcatcher? Yes. And I believe I'm going to use... You don't use, have them up there, do you? No, they're in the other room. Oh. I'm going to use Ghost. Mm, that's going to be pretty. With... Oh crap! Ghost with ink blot. Ghost with ink blot. Because mm. I thought that would be fun to like High really contrast. dark blue. Yeah. And the yep. really light gray. It's like a gray white, a yellowy gray. Mm -hmm. Really, really subtle. Really so thought, yellowy. <clears throat> so it's really interesting. So what I really need to start doing is making dyeing videos because I think it would be fun to see the colors. So Ghost, I wish I had some schemed up, but I don't. Ghost is a very light neutral. And in order to dye it, it uses a small amount of black, a small amount of yellow, and a small amount of um, cyan. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting to see those three colors mixed together and what you get. It almost looks bare, but it has this yellow yeah. gray undertone to it. <clears throat> So I thought it would look really nice with Inkblot, which is a navy with a slight undertone of a purple to mm -hmm. it. It's so very, very pretty. I just dyed both of those up this week and just need to get them like skeined up and in the shop. Yeah, we should have been prepared and have that um, look ready. So, anyway, <clears throat> so April 10th, we have a March 10th. I apologize. We have a podcast prior to that. No, so this is the podcast. This prior is the to that. podcast prior to that. <laughs> um, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Holy cow. Okay, so he, so we'll start a uh, thread on Ravelry, and then we'll also do a hashtag on Instagram, because I think it'll be fun to see everybody's projects on Instagram as well. Yeah, let's do NATR clockwork. Okay, easy. Yeah, and then all of that will be active as of the 10th. Yeah, so um, get your yarn ready, um, look up, you know, I believe get your it pattern. uses one, two skeins of fingering weight. You need a total of 665 yards. And it's knit on a US 5, which is a 3.75 millimeter. And the finished size is 92 inches long. So it is wow. quite long. Do you have opportunities to <clears throat> decrease the length? You know, sometimes his patterns give I, you the option. No, I don't believe so. This okay. is one of his earlier patterns, yeah. right? So really early on in his design career. So I don't believe that he had an option like that and he may have he's been updating a lot of his patterns i just think it's the way that they look in the format of them i don't know that he's made any actual adjustments to them like to change the size okay perfect but it's a good we'll yeah. run it until the first day of summer so it's plenty of time to finish it and it's a good way to get two skeins out of your stash yeah absolutely and you can put any two together really you can go for a, a lower contrast version a higher contrast version i'm wondering if you could coordinating do like colors scrappy maybe. yeah i don't see why not you could That'd probably do really scrappy pretty. especially with and use this. a solid maybe for in like the in the middle yeah or use a solid for this mm. and then scrappy for your alternating stripes mm. could be fun that could be really fun um, totally. All right. So that's that. And then the only other ad mini thing I was thinking of is in the last episode, we had mentioned some of our plans for events that we were going to be going to or oh, hoping yeah. to go to. And that has probably <clears throat> changed. It looks like we will not be able to go to Knit City Toronto because we had an unexpected expense that will be coming up. Yeah. Um, Ray does have a chainsaw, but the size of the tree <laughs> that needs to come down between our yard and our neighbor's yard is not one that can come down with that chainsaw. Yeah, we have a huge 400-year-old oak tree in our backyard. It's it's right between, like right down the fence line between our yard and our neighbor's yard. 
And the tree over the years has started to, um, you know, some of the branches have started to dry out. We're losing some of the branches and they're humongous. So yeah. it's, it's really a big safety issue. And then I was talking to the neighbor the other day who had a, um, arborist. Like a arborist come out and take a look at the tree on their side of the fence. There's a, a big a hole there that's getting bigger and it's kind of rotting through the tree. Um, so it does have to come down. But in order to take this tree down, and we're looking at almost ten thousand dollars, if not a little bit more, I'm not sure how they're going to try to finagle to do it. Yeah, he said it might be a little bit too dangerous right now for a climber to go up there, so they might have to bring in like the the bucket truck and all of that. So uh, yeah, so that's a pretty big expense um, that we just weren't planning for. That we're so yeah, so Knit City Toronto is probably out this year. We will plan on doing Montreal. I'm hoping the year after. That's going to be tricky too, though. Why? Because we have potential plans to do an Alaskan cruise next year. Oh, yeah, year. that's right. Not a knitting cruise. Don't get excited. No. No, with, <clears throat> no just with, with some, some friends. friends. But it falls, the dates that were provided falls, I think, like a week after. Okay. So we'll see. So what we, now, so what does that mean for Maryland? Are we not doing Maryland either? I don't know. Because it was either Maryland or Toronto. Maryland is a little bit. Would be easier if we chose to do it because we could drive. Yeah. Um, and that was one of the issues with Toronto's the expense of the flight there and mm -hmm. the hotel. And it's a, um, it is a long it's a long drive if we chose to drive. And yeah. then we wouldn't want to just stay there for like two days. Two days. Yeah. Where Maryland, we could stay for just a weekend. Right. You know. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, we'll see about Maryland. But yeah, so that is the update on that. And what have... Wh honestly, we've been up to nothing. Well, we've been we've been um, uh, FBI profilers. We have. I actually been, been sick work, again. We've been taking that class. I was sick, and I'm still not a hundred percent. Like I'm still congested daily, but and I have a fever here and there. This but. has been a really terrible season. Everybody seems to be getting sick in some ways, and they just can't really shake it. I know the only month I haven't been sick. I was sick November, December. And December kind of led into January with COVID, and then now February. So I'm mm. hoping that um, I'll be good. But other than that, yeah, it's been sick. I've been trying to get some dying in, um, some tonals, and then you've had work in school. Yeah, school is wrapping up. Um, we'll be this class will be ending next week. It's definitely ramped up um, the amount of of work that I have to do, and it's been a little bit stressful at work as well. So things just kind of all hitting at the same time not to be all like debbie downer but it's just reality right so i haven't had much knitting time um but i'm just one i'll be one class closer to my mba which will be great i'm hoping to get that done within the next year and a half year year and a half because i'm gonna slow i'm gonna slow down i'm gonna take the summer off um i really it kind of stressed me out last last year and as much as I want to get it done, I just, I think it's important for my mental health. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, it's been, it's just been school and work and uh, criminal minds. It has. Yeah. And so that's about it. So let's talk that's about it. some knitting. I have one FO and I think three whips. Nice. This is my second podcast in a row where I do not have an FO. Wah, wah. Oh, I am also um, wearing the Lyle cap. Uh, this is an older knit. This is from... Get that. You weren't Did supposed you to. Again? No, thank you. Um, it is knit out of... Kevin knit this. Out of Leading Men Fiber Arts in their DK base. I don't know if it was like their soliloquy. Is their it may DK be base? soliloquy. And it's something... It has the word man in it. It's like Dark Man or Night Man or Ooh. something like that. I, I feel like that's the name. Um, but I, I love these hats because they're... I feel like I knit Patrick something out of that too. You might have to try to use up some of the. And I used it in a uh, uh, cardigan. Oh, nice. Um, anyway, it's it just very comfortable to wear. Again, a nice uh, light, like transitional type of wear. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's absolutely. not overly it's one warm. Of my, one of my faves. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so no FOs for me, but I do have three whips. My hair is disaster. Boy, we're a mess today. Why? I have no idea. Come on. You have three whips? Three. All right. So I'll jump in at FOs. Jump in. All right. So this is living in my fat squirrel bag that I bought. Yeah, it's very cute. Cute. Um, this is the Parkview hat by Tracy Miller. 
I knit the, hold on, let's pull it up. Good notes. That's a pretty hat. That's the rat hat that I had finished, oh, yeah. Parkview. Okay. So this is the Parkview hat by Tracy Miller from the Grocery Girls. It is a DK pattern. It's written for <clears throat> fingering weight held with mohair. So that is what I did. I don't know why that's in this bag. So I used some stash yarn, some dyed by Dells. <laughs> some old classics. Les Garçons. And this is their BFL Platinum sock. It is Lyra's Jordan and Pan's fur. So Lyra's Jordan, Pan's fur. I'm not saying his full name because I don't know how to say it, but in the show he is called Pan most often. And this is... The hat. I didn't block it, but I think it looks really, really pretty. Yes, uh, it really does. I here's the halo. Halo, halo. I don't know that I will wear this myself. I think I'll just gift it to somebody. Mm -hmm. um, it is quite stretchy, and I think it's because of the fingering and the mohair. I'd be interested to and see. And it's essentially how... a ribbed hat. The entire thing. Yes. I, I would be interested to see, though, how stretchy it is with a DK, mm. you know, like just a single strand of DK. It was a really nice quick knit. The decrease happens very fast. On okay. It. So let me pull out my notes. I knit the size two. Like it feels like it's, I mean, it's going to be super warm. Yes. It is. It feels light, but it's definitely going to be warm. I don't think that I'm a fan of mohair. I, I think it's a texture thing for me. Um, I don't know what it is. I it kind of it's giving me eye a little bit. Well, honest. depending, some people are very sensitive to mohair. It can be very itchy for people. Um, mm. I love the marled look that this gave it, though. Yeah, it looks it looks stunning. I'm sure it's going to be super comfortable for somebody to wear. <laughs> Not you. No. So this is knit using a US four, which is the three point five millimeter and a US seven, which is a four point five millimeter. I did the size two, which fits, I think, a twenty to twenty-two inch circumference head, which is something I'm I'm trying to be a little bit mindful of is making sure that I knit hats with a little bit of negative ease in them. Mm. I tend to think like, oh, I have a 22 inch circumference. Like so I need to go up a little one. bit or right. I, or maybe I'll go up and knit the 24. So I have a little mm. positive ease, but I don't really want that. So I'm going to stop doing that and make sure I start knitting the right size hats. So yeah, really quick. Um, I didn't find any issues knitting with the mohair. Like where I was dropping a strand or something. It, or if I saw that I did, it was pretty clear that I did and easy to grab it and pick it up and correct it. Um, yeah, so just a nice little hat. Yeah. So I will throw this in a gift bin. I think that's really nice. I feel like Isabella and my mother would really... Yes, and I have so much yarn left. Yeah, you do. So I don't know if I should do another one. You know, and just have two in the gift bin. Oh, I might do that just because I don't know what else I'm going to do with the. And it, it was a, it was a quick a quick knit. Yeah, so I may do a second one. Throw both in the gift bin. Um, or what if you do a smaller size and you can do um, like one for Reese and one for Riley. Yeah, of, and then one for Isabel. I mean, there are no kid sizes in there, but kids' heads actually, when you really think about it, they're quite large. To but depending on with. the pattern, you can take out. You know, eight stitches or whatever the yeah. whatever the the count. Is. I don't know that I'd be able to get two kid hats out yeah. of this though. Yeah. So, but I do have another, or we do have another set. Of, or maybe Dana and Emma. Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. It's just you know, it's kind of hard because you have to think whether or not the individual you plan on gifting it to is going to like mohair. Right. So. But you wouldn't know unless you tried, right? I know. So we'll see. So yeah, so that is my Parkview hat. That is my only FO this episode. No. It looks really, really nice. It really does. Yeah, I mean, it feels yeah. great. Yeah. Um, the mohair didn't bother me. Soft. I don't find it 
knitting with it, I didn't find it itchy. I don't know how I would feel mm-hmm. wearing it. Like it doesn't feel itchy to me. It just something. There's something about it. I don't know what it is. For some reason, the well, idea of it maybe is maybe bugging me out a little bit. So yes, that <clears throat> is that. Cool. And that bag is adorable. It is. Yeah. All right. All right. Congratulations. You are up. I am. How many FOs? How many whips do you have? Three. Oh, look at that. Okay, so let's see. Uh, this is a quick one. I didn't make much progress on it. These are my socks um, that I'm just kind of working on at the, like, whenever I can. Um, this is living in my Matter Root bag, which I absolutely love. Their bags. Saw a large version. I think when we were at Skein, it was so nice. Matter of fact, I think Keisha had one. Um, so I showed this last time. This is my completed. So this is love, um, self-striping sock collaboration between Woolen and Nosh and Denise over at Earth Tones Girl. And I showed that last time. I just have to put the heel in. So I was going to wait on that. This is going to be for my heels, the contrast color here, which I think will look really cute. Obviously it will because it came together. And then, um... I just started the second sock. I finished the ribbing, and now I'm just working on the leg of the sock. So for the ribbing, the cast on for the sock, I did a German twisted cast on. Um, I pulled the yarn. Like when I started the cast on, um, I pulled out the yarn until we got to a color change, which it's a lot of yarn to pull out. Um, doo, 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 doo. And at the color change is where I tied my slip knot. So right here, I would put my slip knot, right? I would put my needle through here, and then I would start my German uh, twisted cast on so that you can see that the top of that uh, cast on will be um, that contrasting color. And then when I'm done, I'll start knitting with the, um, with the other color. And we'll have, actually that's backwards, but it doesn't matter. You'll see the contrast is actually gonna be the other color. Hold on, let me just get a couple on here and you can kind of see. So the top of the sock here will be that that color and then as you knit more you'll have the um the body of the sock so you'll see here is my contrast color or not contrast color the change and then it goes right into the thing i think it gives it a nice little detail i did a two by two rib um every time i got to a color change i just started knitting instead of the ribbing and then when i got back to it i started I picked up the ribbing again, no matter where I was. I didn't wait for the start of a round. I just did it in the middle of the round as soon as I hit that transition. And it gives it a nice finished um, look, I think, where the stripes are just super straight in between, which can sometimes be hard to do. Justine um, does that as well. When you're doing ribbing, yeah. And I think where we picked it up from, because she had mentioned she had seen um, Kay from the Crazy Stop that he does it. I saw it from Maddie. Maddie from We Share Needles podcast Uh is the first person... I saw mention that, and that's where we adapted or adopted that technique from. Cool. Um, and so I'm just gonna keep knitting until everything matches. What's great about having one the first sock done, especially on self striping, is that you don't have to really measure anymore by inches. If I start in the same spot, I can just measure by stripes. So once I get to this to this stripe here, I'll know that's where I'm gonna be putting my heel, and when I get down to my toe, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I can use this as a gauge for my second sock. I like um, between a seven and eight inch leg. So I did a seven inch leg on this one. Um, And then I usually knit to about, I wanna say maybe two and a half inches, almost three inch, no, probably about three inches less than my foot length to accommodate for the one and a half inches to 1.75 inches of my heel and my toe. That'll add the length to the length of my foot, and that'll still get me about half an inch to an inch of negative ease, which is how I like to wear my socks. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah. 
Um, knitting those, I won't do it this week because I, I, uh, I got my nine inch circular emphasis out on the last podcast quite a bit. Um, so I am knitting those on nine inch circulars. I did 72 stitches on a um, US 1 2.25 millimeter needle. Um, nice. What else can I tell you? That's about all I have. And then I have my cute little stitch stopper. Speaking of that, did we bring up the. Bin? I did not. No. That's okay. No, I'll have to go down and grab that at some point. All right. So. My, we do have some fun things to show. I know. My next project is also living in a matter root bag. This we got from Maryland Sheep and Wool last year. This is a pattern that I showed you guys last week that had recently been released. This is the Ajax hat. This is this is great. I'm I want to do this so bad. Ajax hat. We saw this at Vogue Knitting Vogue. Live. Hope um, from Hope Page Yarn yeah. Co. and the Pine Baron Knits podcast was wearing it and. I loved it. Yeah, me too. She also had the sample with her at Skein Yarn Shop when she did her trunk show, and she was knitting on a new one. So I was thinking, okay, well, I'll do a sample with my yarn. So I made one alteration to it, is that I just did a tubular cast on. I followed the same instructions from the Rat Hat that I did a couple mm. weeks ago or months ago by Megan Babin. <clears throat> her so. instructions for a tubular cast on are actually amazing Super yeah easy you're doing like uh yarn overs yes instead of having to like pick up the stitches pick up the stitches which is really clever yeah you also do an extra mm -hmm. because you're doing the yarn overs you do an extra so for this one for example let's say i needed to cast on 120 stitches you would typically cast on half so 60 and do your mm -hmm. whatever i think so this yep. one is do 61 one. yep and then do your yarn, knit one yarn over all the way through and then um, knit two together at the end. Yeah. Or you make it at so the that start. the start of the actual first setup row, you do some yep. knit two togethers. So this really clever. is it's a beautiful cast on. Going to be knit out of ink blot, which I have to. I'm glad I'm actually knitting it because if you guys see, there's a little variation in there that I don't know that I'm super happy with. So I'm trying to see how it looks in a hat. I just cast on this week, so I'm barely there. But you can see the little variation. Which I actually think is really pretty. And I, I get where you're coming from. Because if it's it, supposed to be a tonal, it should be, you know, a little bit. It's not a solid. Oh, and, I'm, but... and I have Keisha's oh, yeah. stitch marker on here. That's from Simply Vintage Designs. Yep. These are photographs that she takes. And then... Shrinks them down. Shrinks them down. And but doesn't lose any of the quality. No. It's like they're beautiful. That's a beautiful, it looks like a, a maple tree. So all yeah. of them are um, nature shots. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I will work on this and see. I don't know. Because I don't know how I like it, I don't know if I want it to be a sample. So we'll see. I may take it out and start it in a different color. Oh, I think, I, I get what you're saying though. It looks really nice. I kind of like the little... Um, it, I know that wasn't intentional and it's probably hard to, to repeat, but I kind of like the way that it looks. I would do a little bit more. Get to the stockinette side section. Well, uh, there is no stockinette. No, that's cabled. So, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to see. I've been um, trying to refine my tonal process. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot harder for me on DK yarn and super dark. Yeah. Fingering weight, it's yeah. really easy to get a good good coverage, even coverage so i've made some changes and it seems to be working a little bit better so we'll have to see because i have a bunch of this and i wish i brought them in i actually have so when i dye a tonal yarn i do it in pots like 16 yeah. quart pots and i do four at a time so i'll do one round of fingering and i have three skeins in each so i'll do 12 fingering and then the next round i'll do 12 dk and the fingering came out great. And I think part of the difference is, is the makeup of the bases. So the fingering that I dyed was BFL and the BFL and nylon. Mm -hmm. This is 100% superwash merino. But in the DK, I have three pots that look completely different from this because I don't think that they got up to the same temperature. 
as oh, this right. one. I remember that was a. And this one is more similar, in, with the exception of like the little lighter bits, is the exact color of all the fingering. But the other ones are more similar to the color that I used in Roman's. Right, his sweater. His sweater, which is why I kept those because I didn't like the way that they looked. Right. Do you think it's the ties or do you think it's just the dyeing process that you have to... So it can be the ties because there are... On each skein, they come already skeined up, but there's three, four ties. Yeah. Three of them are of this base. So three of them are 100% superwash merino tied, but one of them is a cotton. And it is... On every base, it's a different color, and it's kind of so you can tell what base, at least in my eyes, that's how I use it, what base I just dyed. And it creates a resist if it's too tight where the yarn can't penetrate through that cotton mm -hmm. and get to the yarn. Like yeah, the, the yarn underneath. That cotton yarn creates the resist where it can't penetrate to the wool underneath it which can create those lighter spots but it can also be that you have sometimes dye that settles and i just don't know that i stirred this enough through the dye process like i think it'll be, yeah one day i'll do a dye video i think we'll see. promises promises but so i'll continue to be careful, I, it might be hanging off. Though. Yeah, I want to make that hat, but I think I need to choose a different colorway. Okay. We'll see. I mean, only knit with what, what you know, knit we'll what see. makes you happy, right? So I, think I really nice. and on that one, it's knit on a very tight, it's knit very tight too. So this is a DK weight hat pattern. I am knitting the th third size for 21 inch circumference. It is knit on a US 2, 2.75 millimeter for the ribbing, and then a US 4, a 3.5 millimeter for the body of the hat. So that that feels like a pretty tight gauge. Yeah. Um, Cause with DK- What is the gauge on it? Oh, I don't know. With the, you know, with the DK, I typically knit, it's 26.5 stitches. Whoa, that's oh, tight gauge. That's very tight gauge. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I'm used to knitting like a US 6 or 7 mm -hmm. on a DK. So we'll see. It like I said, seeing it in person, it's a beautiful, beautiful oh, yeah. hat. It's gorgeous. So I just want to and I was wondering if that dark if that color might be too dark to show mm -hmm. the cabling in it. I think the tighter gauge would probably make the cables look a little bit better, like tighter together. Yeah. Um, especially in that in, in that pattern. They're smaller cables. Mm -hmm. So I think that probably adds to it. It's really a stunning pattern. It it is. And, and I have the mitts that go with it. Yeah, I bought the really combo. Cute. Yeah. It was like nine dollars, I think, for the hat and the mitts. Yeah. What was the pattern again? Can you just say it? Ajax. Ajax. Okay. Cool. Me? Yep. You're Moi? You. All right. So this has taken up a lot of my focus. Um, I am almost finished. However, I hit a little bit of a snag. Um, and I want to talk about that, actually, because um, overall, I'm a little bit disappointed. Um but let's do one thing at a time. So this is the Men's Classic Raglan Pullover. It is by Jane Richmond. It's a wonderful pattern. I highly recommend. I would I would definitely recommend this for a beginner pattern. Um, it helps you understand where to put your short rows, helps you understand where to measure yourself, how to plug in numbers specific to your, you know, to your uh, your body type. And your own measurements. I was sold on this yarn at Vogue, uh, Vogue Knitting Live in New York. We walked by the Loop Fiber Studios booth, stunning booth. We've always, I've always wanted, and I've said this before, I've always wanted to like knit with the yarns. Like, oh, I don't know what I can do with that. I have a hard time in my head unless I see like a sample and stuff. So we saw this sample there, um, and it's in the blues, which is really, really pretty. And I was like, wow, I guess, you know, I would love to do that. It's a nice, simple sweater. I think it was also coming off when Kevin knit his Cozy Classic Raglan, how simple that was, but just how wonderful, like, it looked on him and, like, how comfortable it was. So I was like, yes, let's do a simple sweater. It is worsted weight. Now, um, I'll show this, too, because this is not um, 
this is not like sharing the pattern or anything, but I thought it was really cool on this card. On the back, it tells you um, how much yarn you would need for the size that you want to make. So I looked at the size. I decided that I'm going to either, I wanted, I thought in my head, I'm either going to do the six or the seven. The six was for a 44 inch chest and the seven was for a 46 inch chest. Um, the pattern recommends about four inches of positive ease or so. Um, and my chest, we talked about this, my measurements on my chest fluctuate a little bit. So I'm anywhere between like a 41 to a 42, some days a 43. Um, so I wanted to have that positive ease. And on both of those sizes, it recommends, there are three different contrast colors. It recommends three skeins of each color. Um, so that's nine skeins of yarn. I did purchase the recommended yarn. And always thinking too, like, okay, so I'm probably gonna have a lot of yarn. I'll probably have some yarn left over. I'll be able to have some wiggle room because it maintains that count of three skeins each up to size 11 and then at size 12 it goes up to four skeins each so i figured okay i'm definitely going to have enough yarn regardless of the the situation so um i'm gonna show you what i have and then we'll talk about uh, my yarn usage so i think this is absolutely awesome i love i love the colors we i went with like a rusty um, color scheme with some help from our, our fiber friends over there. The pattern is great. You start off, um, you start off at the back, you're knitting, knitting flat. So you're doing your short rows. So it builds up the back, um, the back of the sweater, and then you end up joining it in the round. You pick up the collar later on, which I did, had no problems whatsoever with that. Um, knit down, um, to the sleeve separation. I ended up going uh, right at the sleeve separation is where I changed my colors. There is a, and I'll see if I can link it down below. The person who knit the sample reached out to me. They're on Insta, uh, they're on Ravelry and they have their project page and exactly what they did, how much yarn they, they use, where they changed their colors, all right there in their Ravelry page. So I'll try to link that down below. Um, they ended up changing their co their colors a little bit higher than um, than I did, but anyway, uh, loved it. Got down um, through this section. The second section here was actually a smaller section, and I have one full skein of yarn left over of that color, and I'll tell you my colors in a second. Plus, I have all of this left over, so I really only used about. Um, maybe 115 grams of yarn, 120 grams of yarn of that contrast two color. The first color that I did, um, I did go through almost two complete skeins. So I have this left over, which is probably about 20 grams, um, maybe less, 15 grams, plus a whole another skein left over. So I have one full skein of this left over one full skein plus this, so almost two full skeins left over. And then I got through the orange, or the the solid. I knit one full sleeve. And then um, I did alter, I did change the, the way that this pattern is. This The decreases are done by, by inch, not by row. Um, so I was able to measure out how many rows per inch I was getting as I was knitting. And for 10 decreases, I decreased every eighth row. And then for the last four decreases, I decreased every fifth row. That was actually a perfect amount for me. This was my last decrease. I knit one row and then I was able to get right into my ribbing. So the, the measurements for me worked out perfectly. Um, and that was about 18 and a half inches for my sleeve. And I did two inches of a two by two rib. Is and that long for you? I feel, have you tried that? I did. Oh, yeah, okay. I'll put it on. I just 18 and a half inches. Oops. Your your total length of your sleeve is no. 18 and a half. No. So what the total I length of your sleeve is it's like 21, 22 inches. That I felt like that because I feel like I knit mine. Oh, maybe not. I yeah. guess maybe I knit mine to about 17. Um, I you know what the problem is that I have these on needles, but this one I don't. I don't know if I can get my wrist through here. Oh, I can. Great. So, 
I think the fit. Um, oh, sorry, guys. So I have um, a bit of positive ease, which I really, really like. The sleeves, I thought I was going to have, I thought I was going to be a little bit upset because it was a lot of positive ease, but I really like that sweatshirty type of feel, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I think it, it makes me feel very comfortable in this. Um, Can you pull this sleeve down again? Yeah. I just want to see like. So here's the length. So pulled all the way down, goes right to there. Okay. Which is kind of perfect for me, you know? Um, and it, it does, you know, I think it, I think it looks really good it's gonna yeah, be it's very a great, it's cozy a great um the collar is really nice i think on it i'm i'm super comfortable i'm not gonna be like you know sometimes especially at like you're not gonna fidget i'm not gonna fidget with it like oh it's too tight yeah like i don't know it's just gonna it just falls um very nicely i think on me so point is i get to i get this sleeve fully done um i get down here and then this is three skeins. Are you sure you don't have an extra skein? 100%. There's no way that's three skeins of yarn. It's three skeins of yarn. I'm telling you. Yep. It's three skeins of yarn. I don't know. Yeah. So how, I have... So how can this... All of this. Yeah. Plus the two inches of ribbing. All of this. And this is three skeins. It's three skeins of yarn. Unless, like, am I really... Am I, I just, I ordered a skinny yarn, so I'm hoping that I didn't. No, yeah. That's it. No, no. That blows my mind because. Yeah. So, anyway, I think, um, I think regardless, the, the card was not accurate for me. Um. You know, I did get gauge in the pattern, actually, which was which was good. Um, the colorways, by the way, are, this is above, so full skein left over. It's 220 yards per 100 grams, 100% extra fine uh, merino worsted. This is, uh, the colorway is beyond, so that's my color one. And then the color three is called... Roybus? It's a T. A T. It's a T. It's a T. Whatever that means. No, it's a type of T. Oh. So Like a beverage. Um, yeah, anyway, I, I do I do love this. I love the color. I love the fit and the feel of it. But um I'm a little bit disappointed. I'm a little bit disappointed in the the yarn. Like I said, I, I Not did. Not the yarn, the the not the yarn itself, the amount of yarn that the card yeah. had yes, recommended. Thank you. thank you. Based on what you're right. currently knitting at. So, just out of curiosity, mm -hmm. have you measured your gauge here? Like, I know you did a swatch. Mm -hmm. Like, I wonder if your gauge has. It could have been. I mean, I definitely have a lot of positive ease, right? So, I probably could have gone, if I wanted to, I probably could have gone down uh, a size. But. Even with that being said, mm -hmm. if the 54, you know, if the 54 inch 42. chest, 42. no, 54 inch chest could use oh, the yeah. same thing. Yep. Right. Then, yeah. So the size 11 is for a 54 inch chest. I think it would have been easier or it would have been better had they on the card said maybe, you know, two skeins of this yarn. Um you know, two, two and a half skeins of this yarn. I know that doesn't make any sense, but just in case, you know, and maybe four skeins here. Yeah. So I feel, I just kind of feel like, you know, I bought nine skeins of yarn. Um, so for future, what, I mean, what could have made a difference? I mean, not that you can go back and do it is if you started your sleeves in this color Yeah. for, a couple rounds, mm -hmm. five, you know, let's say five rounds on each um, sleeve. Maybe you would have had enough of yeah that one. Yeah, possibly, possibly, you know. But again, I think um, I, I do. I, I think the pattern is is wonderful. The yarn itself feels absolutely incredible. 
Um, I'm going to be very comfortable in the sweater. I do like that it's a little bit more on the oversized. Um, I don't have a body type like this guy. So um, that's totally fine. I just, again, I'm just... So I have a lot of yarn left over. Uh, we were talking about what I'm going to do. And I think I'm going to turn this into a, um, a boneyard shawl. Because I wanted to knit another one of those. And I do love these colors together. So mm. I think with, the, with these two colors, I'll do a striped boneyard. And I'll have plenty. How many skeins of each do you need for a boneyard? I don't know. But I but the, again, I can um, always make it a yeah. smaller. Yeah, true, true. You know, I could always make it smaller. And knit it on like larger needles. And you're going to have more than enough of the third color now, too. Yeah, because so now I got another orange. Three. Yeah, I got another full skein of that. So slightly disappointed in, in that recommendation i probably should have looked at the pattern and said well i definitely don't need three skeins of that middle color like that doesn't make any sense i just i think i was inhaling the yarn fumes and i said oh great i'll take this because this is what it tells me yeah but you wouldn't have known anyways that you would have i would have you're right one and a half you yeah. know yeah good point um so again i'm not disappointed in the pattern or what i have done so far just the just, composition of the yarn. No, it's just I love the it. amount it's of great. yarn. It's just the amount of yarn that was recommended. Okay. That's all. Just wanted to share. You know, be honest. Good job. That's all. All right. So once that once that yarn comes, I that sh I should not it should not take me long at all. A I day. Have, yeah. I have maybe like three inches left to go and then I do my decreases. All right. Or my my ribbing. So up next for me. This is living in my Paradise Island bag that we got at Knit City it's Montreal. It's another great bag. Last year, this is my Cozy Classic Raglan number two. Yeah. By Jesse Made Designs. I am knitting this out of Mayak Tibetan Cloud in the colorway Flame. It is a very salmon yeah. color. It's beautiful. I am knitting the extra large, which is the fifth size. I did not get gauge. My gauge was tighter than the pattern called for. So instead of changing my needle size, I went up a sweater size. And I have finished the body of the sweater. It's so good. Um, the sweater currently is a little tight on me because i have some positive ease you you have positive ease, I do have positive <laughs> ease from not the sweater but from the holiday body. yeah eating um which i'm looking to remedy but in the length so i tried it on it and i added a half an inch of length compared to my previous one and it feels shorter than that hmm. so i'm confused but this yarn is a delight to work with. It is a two ply yarn. It's, it's gorgeous. It's a luxury. It's so soft. Yeah. Um, I have knit with this before. I've made an Oslo hat out of it, but um, I did. I'm following the pattern exactly. I haven't made any alterations. I did the tubular cast on, which I love. Did the short rows. The in my previous one, the neck fit me beautifully. Um, I also did a one by one rib down here and did an Italian sewn bind off, which I enjoy doing an Italian sewn bind off. It just I like the, the result is gorgeous. The result is, but I also like the movement. Me like too. you get into a really nice rhythm and the more that I'm doing it, I don't even, I don't look anymore. Like yeah. now I'm good with that type of bind off. So I don't have to like go and watch a YouTube video any longer to do it um unlike my last one my raglans i didn't have any issues i did all my increases so i didn't have to correct that by remember like last on the other one i had the wrong number on one oh yeah sleeve so you section you had and to I, try to so then i had to skip a yeah. round of doing it on this on one, one but then do it on this one and then get back to the right number yeah that did not happen here um so this is knit on a US 2.5, which is a 3.5, or I'm sorry, a 3 millimeter, then a US 3, 
for a 3.25 millimeter and a US 7, which is a 4.5 millimeter. Great. Um, so, yeah, I bound off the body and then I just kind of took a break from it because yeah. I needed something other than stockinette and just like knitting in the round it. Mm-hmm. I think I wasn't being like mentally stimulated. Yeah. So that's that when I cast happen. on the hat. Sometimes you need to to do nothing but stockinette and sometimes yes. you need to not just do, not do stockinette. Right. Yeah. So I will pick up, I may pick up the sleeves this weekend. Mm-hmm. And start those because I think it will be sleeves. I feel like go pretty quickly, you know. Like oh yeah, I. It's funny when I knit sleeves. I think I've said this before. I think of knitting a hat, and I'm like, okay, once I get to you know 80 stitches, I'm like, okay, this is less than a worsted weight hat, and keep going. So I like getting the number lower and lower that motivates me it does it decreases. i agree yeah so, I totally agree so that is my cozy classic raglan hopefully i'll have it done by my plan is to have it done by the end of the month mm. hopefully i don't see why not because i want to keep the sweater knitting alive i have i'm trying to think one I two <clears throat> i think four maybe five more sweaters in mind that I would like to try to do this year. Good for you. I was actually just looking at all of this yarn that we got so much of. I know. I haven't even thought about I that. Know. We got a like, really good deal on this random yarn um, at, Rhinebeck. at Rhinebeck when we bought like each skein, like $5 skeins of yarn. Is mine down there? I don't know. Whose is down here? But... Is this mine? No. We bought that with the intention of like doing some sweaters and things. So, you know, we've got a lot of intentions, good intentions. We just have to follow through. Yeah. I we mean, don't have I, to do anything. We just, if we want to follow through. I know my, the other sweaters that I would like to work on this year is Sean's Gambier. Oh yeah. We have to do that. Our yarn should be coming soon. Um, Sean's Gambier. My Brooklyn Tweed one. The cabled one, yeah. I need to start that over because it's been so long. I don't even know where I was. Uh, and I think my gauge, I think I screwed up again. I think I did that thing where I flip-flopped the needles instead of going mm. down. I went up or something like yeah. that. So I know those two, my Anne Hansen with the yarn that we got oh, at Ryan Beck. I forgot about that. I have a fingering weight cardigan to do. <laughs> I want to do a core vest, but not out of the Moda. Mm-hmm. And I want to do something else. I don't... Oh, I'm going to do... Another... I think another Cozy Classic Raglan. Although I... Yes, I will. Because it has um, instructions to fade. Oh, fine. So I have yarn that you bought me from Savvy Skeins. Yes. To do a pattern by Tannis Lavallee, the... City Limits. City Limits. S- sweater. You bought that for me like two or three years ago for either Christmas or my birthday. That was birthday. before I was knitting, I think. Yeah. So I've had that for quite a while. So what I'm going to do with that is hold it with like a Surrey Alpaca mm-hmm. to make the geek, geek, the geek, the geek, the geek? DK and do a fade that way. So those are my sweater plants for the year. That's, That's a, lot. a lot. Yeah, no, it is. But, but good. I mean, it's okay to plan. And don't be disappointed if you... No, if I, they don't know. get done, they don't get done. Yeah. But that's I would like to do that because I do enjoy yeah. having a large project like a sweater on the needles. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, too, the more we knit sweaters, the more comfortable we're going to get. And the better we're going to get at figuring out what size fits best. Yeah, that's where Where I our measurements, agree. you know, what measurements we like. So it's almost, um, you know, it's like practicing. Yeah. It's different than practicing knitting. You know, knitting, when you first start, you're not good at it. You know, knitting and purling. So same thing with, like, making a sock. Your first couple pairs of sock aren't going to be great. Right. Your first good couple point. sweaters probably aren't going to be great. Right. But the more that you do it, the more comfortable you get. Right. And the more you start learning about your knitting and what, how you like your knitting to fit. Because it is going to fit differently than a store-bought sweater. 
Yeah, um, I agree. I, I think that's an excellent point because that's what I feel the same way about knitting these sweaters. And like I'm learning, right? We learn something new yeah. every time we do it. And it's really about how to fit those sweaters to your body. Correct. Like there's a lot of courses and books that you can read to like to do that, but nothing beats actually doing it. Doing it and making mistakes, right? That's how we that's how we learn. So yeah. agreed. agreed. Great job. All right, so that was my th- second whip. You are up with your third. Okay. Ready? This is my this is uh part of my kit along. Are you going to make make a comment? Not yet. Do you all remember these uh comfy um comfy these emotional support chickens <laughs> getting comfy from. comfy cozy chickens um this was generously sent to us um over at from the knitting tree la the the shop um that created these kits they've been really really they were wonderful to us and they each they sent us each a, an additional kit so my second kit was Beyonce. I thought was fantastic. So um, I started this the other day. I left my notebook downstairs. Um, and I just, it, it's so much fun to do. I think there is so much fun to do. So I have to, um, I'll show you, I knit the entire thing. Um, so I'll show you what I have so far. I love the packaging. I think it's hilarious. There's nutrition facts on the back. Um, it comes with everything that you need, included a pr- including a printed pattern. And the pattern has since been updated. Um, and there's also been the, uh, the designer here, uh, the curator of these kits here, have put together uh, or given some credit to um, where they got their inspiration from for this pattern as well. So um, the colors, I pretty much used all of the all of the yarn, but um, this is the secondary color. It's really cute. None of them have names. All right, so here is here's my chicken. Not stuffed yet, but this is what she's going to look so like. So cute. Isn't she so cute? Um, that looks big. That uh, looks bigger than your other one. So I, I here's the thing, right? With this kit, I don't know what the, the makeup is, but look, like that seems very, like, thick to me um and i think that's more of an aaron weight yarn than a worsted weight yarn i don't know no i don't know because then this is also but it's spun a little bit differently yeah anyway um i am a looser knitter i knit these on the recommended size seven needles um this is how so you start if you haven't done these um you start here you knit these little sections first, uh, one, and then the second one, and then you seam them together. So I did a crochet. I did single crochets straight down, which actually I think looks really cool. Um, so when you fold it, it kind of ra- is raised a little bit, which is neat. See that? And on my previous one, I did a three needle bind off on mine. Right. You can do whatever you want. Um, and then, you know, you're you're striping the yarn as you're going. Um, It's all short rows, but the great thing is because this is garter, you don't have, uh, you don't have to pick up your short rows, right? So you just do wrap and turns um, and you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then you don't have to pick anything up when you, when you go. Um, But there's some breast shaping, which is really cute in here. So we're going to, so this is going to get seamed together here like so. And then you have your little under piece that you will sew into here. I ran out of the main color yarn. This is what I have left. And so what I ended up doing was just substituting, that's cute, <laughs> just substituting um, the secondary color and did that in the middle. So uh, it, it also doubles as a hat. It does. It looks great. Yeah, you should totally do that. Then I also did, oh no, where are my, where are my other pieces? Maybe you left them downstairs? No, everything's together. I just pulled it out. Was it in the paper, in the pattern? No. You also knit the comb and- The wobble? The waddle. Waddle. Huh, I, 
I had it all together. I don't see him. Oh, there they are. So then you do the the comb, which is cute. That'll sit on the top of the chicken's head, like so, right? And then the little waddle thingamajigger will go there. The kit also comes with eyes. Oh, what color eyes do you have? I don't know. Oh, purple. Uh, no, they're blue. Blue. I think. Mm. Yeah, blue. Yeah. That's a nice blue, too. It is. So, um, super cute. It came with like a little stitch marker as well, uh, darning needles. It really does come with everything that you need. Except the stuffing. To complete this, except for the stuffing. And your needles. And the needles. So, um, that is Beyonce. She'll be done pretty soon. The, my least favorite thing to do in, in anything, in crocheting, knitting, whatever, is seaming. But... Um, it's really not that big of a deal for this for this pattern. But look how cute. No. And who do we see? It's got to be somebody on our Thursday Night Knit Night group who, when they seam theirs, their seam is kind of exposed mm -hmm. on the outside. And it actually looks really cute. It looks... Um, it reminds me of something. You know, like, it reminds me of sewing when you leave the raw edge type of oh, thing yeah, where it's yeah, exposed yeah. and it gives it that country-ish yeah. type of feel. Yeah. So, Mine will probably be exposed and look a little janky, but it'll fit into this chicken. What I'm going to do and, and why I kind of stopped was I'm going to soak these now just to kind of clean any any of the yarn off, soften it up a little bit. Uh, it is super squishy, but it's not... Um, you can feel there's some like oils in there yeah, or something. We didn't do that so, with the last one, no. but we talked about that and I said, and we both said like you just from knitting in general, right? You have all the oils mm -hmm. and stuff from your hands that are getting on the yarn. So yeah. it's not a bad idea to. So I'm going to soak it. it. I, I may use a color catcher. I mean, I probably I will. No, I think you'll be fine. They're not super. I mean, some of this is saturated, but there's no like reds in here, right? Yeah. I mean, blue so. and purple can bleed depending on the but dye that that's look, used in it but look okay if they if they do anyway um i'm gonna soak it both of these pieces and then i will put it together and then i'll have another um emotional support chicken very nice yeah it's so much fun i just like i picked it up and i just i couldn't put it down you like the short rows i find um just give me more motivation I love short to do rows. it. Yeah, it's just like, oh, I'm going to do this. Oh, now I'm decreasing. So like now I only have to knit five and then wrap and turn, you know? Right. And nothing is more than like maybe 30 stitches on the needle at a time. So the rows go the rows go like very fast. Um, do you want to talk about that while I go down and grab yeah. the bin and stuff? Yeah. All right. So last up for me, and this is living in a fringe supply co bag. I don't need no, I don't know why I brought it with me. Um, this has been taking my the all of my time the past several days. This is my Jelly Roll Blanket by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. I am working on my second stripe, and I am knitting this out of fingering weight yarn scraps. We have a huge um, bin in one of our closets of all of our scraps, and... We put our scraps in these bags with the yarn tag, just so we kind of know. So like, for example, this is some fiber optic yarns that I bought at New York Sheep and Wool. So Ryan Beck 2022, I believe. And this way I know it's fingering. So I've just been grabbing some randomly and throwing them in. So there's no rhyme or reason to my color choices. I just grabbed a bunch, filled this bag up, and I've been taking them out randomly. So I am currently here. So this is the end of strip one. I'm on stripe two. So I have done all of this this week. This here is the rest of my trilogy yarn 
that I used in the Musselboro hat that I finished by Isolde Teague, which that's actually how you say the pattern. I watched a video from Isolde Teague on YouTube where she talks about the cast on for this, which is different than the one that I've been doing, but it still looks super easy. And she calls it the Musselboro. So this was Trilogy Yarns. This is Lolo Did It, and I'm pretty confident this is a Downton Abbey color. Ooh. Bless you. Bless you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and then I just threw in some leftover Felici, which I think this is really fun. It's oh, it is. So it is super color blocky, which I don't mind. Um, because it's self-striping. Yeah. So, and I have just this I think it's little a fun little pop. This little bit left, and I really have been trying to use all of the yarn. I know I did not of this colorway. This is a Le Garçon colorway, and I still have a good bit of this left, so I'll use it in a stripe later on. And I want to say I still have some of this color, which I believe is also Lolo did it. So I'll use the rest of that later on, but this fully used, this is my yarn. It's, um, this is rhubarb. Yeah. This I believe is Amanda Knits, and if I'm not mistaken, it's Fox Farts. Such a fun color. This is also Trilogy yarn, and I think this is either Little Nugget or like Teddy Bear or something. This is from your I did, Pure Joy. Yeah. Right? And then this is no idea. No, not my pure joy. Yeah. No. No. My pure joy was leading men. Um. Oh yeah, you did sh uh, dirty truce and something else yeah. for that. I can't remember what I used teddy bear. Um. Uh, maybe my slip extravaganza. Yes. 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 Mm. You use all Nancy Sharon, I think. Yep. So yeah, it's a really relaxing knit. It's great for TV knitting. And I do want to say, so last time I mentioned this, like the seaming and, you know, that I wasn't happy with the way the seaming looked. I knew that this was going to have seams. It's one of the reasons I wanted this. I just didn't realize that in the seam, you were going to see both colors. So the more I looked at it, the less it bothered me. So I was just like, I'm just going to keep doing okay. it. But... Which is the, the the top of the blanket? Which is the, this is the top of the blanket. So you want the seam... To be visible. Right. And the reason I had chosen this and I wanted to do this is on our Vertices Unite from Stephen West, the seams on the back are one of my favorite parts. Like I yeah. wish there was a way to have the seams on the front um, where you pick up stitches. But because... So I was trying to figure out, can I get it to look the same way because of the way that that is knit? Yeah. It's a little bit different, and I couldn't. But I don't dislike the seams at all. I'm quite pleased with them. So, yes, this is the Jelly Roll Blanket, and I am knitting this on 2.75 millimeter needles, which I think is what the pattern calls for. And, yeah, I'm just following instruction, you know, the pattern. And it's super, super relaxing and easy once you get into the flow. I am debating on casting on another blanket. The um because Justine had just shown her finished version of the cozy. I think I still have it up. Actually, I think I have hers up. Oh, who the hell is that? Oh, I bet you that's this. Let's go back. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go. So the Cozy Comfort Throw from a homespun house. And this is Justine's. And her fade is really great. I really, really love it. I do too. So we have a bunch of advents. Uh, I think we have several from Nancy over at Trilogy Yarn. We have... 
I want to say I have one from like Lemonade Shop or something like that. And then Lollipop yarn. Lollipop, Lollipop Girl. Lollipop Girl. And um, one, I don't know, some, you know, a bunch of minis mm -hmm. from Nancy, I think from her Color Explosion as well. So we I have wanna... minis from Whatnot. Remember? We have minis from Frankie Gray Fibers. So I'm going to go through the minis and I'm going to try to put together my own fade from them and then hold it with a skein of undyed yarn to marl them and fade it. And that one, I'll probably use it like a US 7 or 8. So it'll go by pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah. And it's just garter. So I think that would be a nice knit. Great. All right. So that is all of our knits that we have finished and that we've been working on. We are going to move on oh, to... Oh, I meant to grab the crochet thing to show while I was down uh, there. Oh, well. We'll Next move time. on to um, Owl Post. Uh, okay. So we have a I lot... I think there's of, quite a bit of that. I huh? think it's mostly Owl Post, to be honest. Um, I don't really know... Don't no, know. we've already showed that. Okay, great. Because we didn't really do a great job clearing out the... Um... So we got some nice little gifts in the mail. This was yeah. for us. They wrote... Because of Skylar... It reminded them of us. But look at this. This is cute. Isn't that adorable? Maybe I'll put it together this week. Yeah, this is from our friend Amanda. So thank you, Amanda. Yeah, cute. super cute. I love... Um, I did too. That Legos are... You know, that they make these more... Not to, Well, they do have adult Legos now. Like, I got you one for yeah. your birthday? Yep. No. For Christmas? I have two. Of, you got me two of them. Lego things? Yeah. I have to put them together. My so, yeah. Star Wars ones. So, I think this is cute. I don't know where I put them, though. I thought I just got you one. No, I think you got me two. That's okay. Um, yep, that was really cute. And then... I'm not sure. No, that's... Okay. That's my my mother mom? just bought these for me. Oh. I mean, it didn't really come in the post. No, that was dropped off, off as I was going to the post office. Yeah. Okay, so this is really, really fun. Um, this was quite the the pack up, and I love when you know you send a card, and this person's also a Star Trek fan, which I'm a huge Star Trek fan. Um, I don't know if we can share your name, so I we, will, well, no, we won't. But we will say thank you. Thank you. They Look will know the who they are. Really fun are, stickers, yeah. aren't they adorable? Look at Guinan. I know. Isn't she great? Yeah. Actually, uh, um, what's her face too? This one's good. What's her name? Diana Troy. Diana Troy. Yeah. She's lovely. So um, sent those and sent some really cool um, yarn from Ginger Snap. This is this Undercover Thor. These are all These Star are, Trek themed. Well, this one's not, but it... Um, oh, correct. Yeah. But it reminded them of... Um, one of the, the uniforms from Star Trek. So anyway, so this is uh, Undercover Thor Wonder Woman. I think it's like a combination together. This is on the dust fingering weight, 7525. Merino, really pretty. And then this is from Fiberweed mm -hmm. Fiber Co. This is Enterprise Bingo. This is really, really pretty. It is. Wouldn't it be fun to play Bingo on the Enterprise? And then this one is called Bloodwine. Yeah. And these are both on their Sweet Pea Sock, which is 80-20 Merino 2-ply. Which blood, I really... blood wine is what Worf used to drink. The Klingons. They love their blood wine. Well, we saw the episode, right? Where not... So of Star Trek, not Picard. Was it Picard? No, it wasn't Picard. It was the Strange New Worlds where... They went to the planet where the Klingons were, and they were drinking the blood wine. Strange New Worlds is the cartoon one. No, that's below deck or under deck. Correct. Okay. So Strange New Worlds. Sure. Remember, um, the female officer who is the distant relative of Khan, surname yes. something Khan, and she oh, yeah, was yeah. and she was drinking the blood wine or yes. something with the Klingons. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Klingons love their blood wine. Um, this is Kevin's yarn. Yeah, actually, here, we'll just show this. So this, one of our Thursday night lies, that's all lies, Wednesday night um, knit friends asked me to try to come up. Um, 
she has some yarn that she had purchased, I believe, from Turkey, and she wanted to see if I could dye it green. So I brought in a container that I have with some of the tonals in there. So what I've been doing is as I try to come up with new colorways and I test them on 10 gram minis, once I'm done, I wrap them on floss bobbins mm -hmm. and I keep them in a storage container. So she had chosen this green and I dyed it up just to show her what it would look like, which I will dye this again. I only dyed a couple skeins so I can get an idea. But look at this green. It mm -hmm. is... I think I'm going to call it evergreen when I do dye more, but I think this is a really pretty green. I think it's gorgeous. I absolutely think it's gorgeous. Yeah, I like this. This is on the BFL base. Um, did okay. that come with this? I don't know. I think it did. I don't think so. I don't recall, though. Or did I, we get these somewhere? I don't know. I don't I don't I don't know if we showed them already and I don't Usually we're much more organized this way but um I mean I could show like we could show these come from Comma Craft Co. I feel like we showed these. We probably did. It's worth showing again. They're adorable. Yeah. And um, then these are the uh These are the I love these point protectors. So, speaking of those, we I'm not sure. Are really lucky. So, if you guys know, the first company that we knew of who did these stitch stoppers was Fox and Pine. They are based out of Prince Edward Island in Canada. And Tara has been super generous super with generous. us. Amazing. Um, she has sent us some previously, and she has a new product that she released. She hasn't seen it before. It is kind of like, um, this is called a yarn belt. I'm going to take it out. So this you can wrap on the outside of your yarn ball, like especially if you pull from, from the, the inside. Mm -hmm. And then it has all of these notches on it so that you can just keep tightening it to keep your yarn nice and safe and so that you don't get a bunch of yarn bars. Or depending on if you're using minis, like it'll fit around a mini. Yeah. Oh, um, very good point, right? Yep. And because the outside may not, yeah. Right, so like this one. Okay, Kevin. Right, so you- You having some performance anxiety? <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, it will um, it will wrap around here. So this is what- I have. think it's like, it's super cool. And so it keeps it nice and um together together you can pull from the you know pull from the outside adjust the size if you want to and again if you want to use it for you know minis or different size skeins if you have like a jumbo skein that may not fit in one of those um you know the cloth yarn whatevers you can use you know you can yeah. use this and she also sent up trouble with words today over some other stitch stoppers oh God, so these so are gnomes and then with some stitch mark um yeah some stitch markers which so, these are little metal cat ones, which are really cute. I actually should go check out her site because she has the best, honest to God, the best stitch stoppers of foxes. I oh, think I, I have them all. I know. I don't know though. So those are the ones that I gravitate towards. I use most of my um, stitch stoppers that I use are either foxes or like a holiday Yep. themed one or seasonal one i um just wanted to show like this one the, the gnomes are very cute she's got a lot of different versions that one has hearts on the hat i don't know if you can see that yeah this is one that was not just sent to us but this one is really cute has stars on and the, the lantern's cute yeah right super we have uh a, a million of them well but yeah. i love you them have a million of them. I do. Um, so definitely check out Fox and Pine Stitches. Yeah, look at in the back I just the... think that... Oh, that's super cute. Isn't that too. cute? I didn't see that. Yeah. Yeah, I just think that they're... I love her products. Wait, can I see this? So thank you very much, Tara. We appreciate you sending this to us. I think we did that wrong. Look at this. 
It goes like this. Oh. There's a little thing there. Well, like, that's what I was trying to do was get it through there, and I couldn't get it through there because I didn't have it in front of me. Where did you have it? Under the side of you? No, you were holding the yarn. When I was trying to put the band around it when you were holding the yarn. Mm -hmm. Recall that just happened about 30 seconds ago? No. I think you have a little bit of dementia. It's okay. Will you take care of me? No, you're going straight to a home. <laughs> I'm sure somebody would come and be happy to take care of me. As long as I remember how to knit. All right, anyway, super cute. I okay, stop playing with this. It's actually really fun. Okay, um, what else? I think that's all of our... Owl post. Owl post. Uh, the next is our... Um, Break in the Break bank. in the bank, which... There's not much there's of There's only one thing. And it was uh, part of a club. This is one of our favorite clubs it's from Will and Zanash, her monthly mystery um, club. Have you seen that knit up? It's stunning. It really is so pretty. This is the colorway is penguins, which is super cute. If you know, you know. And um, here it is. This is the February colorway. Look how pretty. And this. And this is it knit up. Watch. How it knits up. She's so good. It's so good. I might cast that off. Yeah, you should. I feel like I've been... I, we need to um, start making some progress with our Willem to Nosh dash. All right. Is that it? Whew. That's so. everything. So, lastly, um, if you're done with... If you're all done with the knitting stuff, we're just going to talk about what we've been reading and watching. Okay, great. So watching has been super easy. Super easy. We are done with Criminal Minds. We have watched 16 seasons. We finished season 16 last night. That's yeah. Criminal Minds Evolution. Yep. Um, I actually really enjoyed the that season. I enjoyed the new... I did too. Like... I wasn't sure in the very beginning. Overarching story right. through all 10 episodes. Right, right, right. Um, I really liked that it was continuous and it wasn't serial like the original series. You know, the original series had a couple episodes where it was like to be continued. Yeah. Probably two episodes, maybe three every season. And it's it was usually like the season finales or something. Yeah. Like this... It thought it was done really well. It was quite dark, so there were moments where it was really hard to see. So we may need to adjust our television going in the future for that. Uh, but I love it. I am disappointed in that 16th season that some of my favorite characters are not Same. in the show any longer. But some of my favorites are. So I guess there has to be some balance in the force. And it's such a freaking good show i yeah i good. had always watched you know i used to watch an episode here or there if there was nothing on tv i'd be like oh let's run an episode of criminal minds not knowing the story and i used to see a bunch of like clips from it on reels mm -hmm. and to watch the the episodes that those clips came from was oh, really totally. fun but such a great show if i would highly um recommend it and then last night we started watching downton abbey yay i've previously watched it i Ray never has have. not so we are but going, i'm totally into it already i love that show yeah. i'm really excited to to get into that i have also watched a couple things on my own um because of my illness <laughs> so i have started watching true detective season one I think I only have like three or four episodes left of that. That's the one with Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson. And it's really interesting. So I'm excited to see where this season kind of goes. I have heard that seasons, I think two and three, aren't necessarily great. And it's okay to skip those because I would like to watch the newest season, um, season four, which has Jodie Foster in it. And then I watched a documentary on netflix called let me pull up imdb i think it's called they called they called him mostly harmless oh so this was a really interesting documentary it was about a hiker who was found unalive 
don't know why. <laughs> this is where people say they say that on other platforms so that you don't get like banned because you don't want oh, to say, say the word dead cer- or killed or anything like that <laughs> right which you just said so great job uh, oh so we're gonna get banned no i don't know no oh. i don't know so he was found unalived in his tent but nobody knew who he was he had no identification um he was found weighing 80 pounds so like literally skin and bones and it was just the story of uncovering who this individual was and let me tell you, those sleuths can be a little unhinged. Um, I would recommend watching it. I, yeah, I would recommend watching it. I watched another one, too. It just came to... Um, yeah, it was really... Re- so that one was really interesting. It kind of tied in well with, like, Criminal Minds, like, where we were with that. Just the... It took them, I think, two years to figure wow. out who this guy was and his life's story. So I would recommend that. And then I... I feel like I watched another one. I did. Um, crap, it was another Netflix one. Remember I was telling you about it? The the guy, he went on a date with a woman. Oh, yeah. And, and then went on a date with another woman. And, and then it ended up being like, It was like a freaking mess. I was yeah, watching this. Yeah, I couldn't this. believe you were telling me about it. Okay. Oh, I just got a little chilly. Let know? me see if I could figure it out. I need to not get rid of that page so I remember. Um, Netflix documentaries 2024. Let's see. Lover Soccer Killer. Ooh. That was a good one. I think it was shot poorly. I don't think the... It reminded me of like a Unsolved Mysteries type of shooting where, you know, you have actors playing some of these parts. So I don't think it was done, shot incredibly well. The story itself was pretty interesting and there was some... Yeah, when you were telling me about like, it. Like... Kevin ruined it for me. He told me the whole thing, which was... I wouldn't watch it anyway. Yeah, there were just some time. like... You think you know who who did it. You think you know what's going on. And then you don't. It's a... I mean, that's some real life scary stuff. So those are two things that I watched. I don't think I watched anything else. I did not watch anything... Um, other than Criminal other Minds than and Criminal Downton Minds Abbey. And Downton, I love it. I can't wait till we can like settle in. To, oh, I wish we had... I wish we made soup. I feel and, like it would be a good day for soup. <sighs> Anyway, we don't have enough here for me to make a soup. I would have to go grocery shop. No, we have rice and chicken and stuff. We'll have yeah. that. And I have salad for lunch. Um, So what were we saying? Now we're on to what we've been reading. Oh, what we've been reading. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, because I need to look actually at okay. last week's show. Um, I did finish The Burning Witch, uh, which is, no pun intended, which is the second book in the Burning Witch series, which is the um, sequel series to the house witch um by delamock i'm probably saying that name incorrectly it was just lovely the the next book i believe will be coming out in may it's i i cannot recommend the series enough the author is is great the uh the storyline it just it makes you feel good it it's very much um an empowerment type of story as well you can't help but root for you know the underdogs and um, to find out what kind of chaos everybody gets into. It's very lighthearted, but at the same time, there is an underlying um, conflict and bad guy. Um, but the bad guys are not necessarily well. At least in the first series, I'm curious to see how what is determined about the bad guy in this one. Not necessarily what you think you know. Um, anyway, it's. Uh, great highly recommend so i did finish that and then i am currently still listening to mists of avalon by marion zimmer bradley it is my all-time favorite book ever um i've i've read this book a bunch of times and every time i read it it, i get something different out of it Mm. and like you know you're at a different point of your in your life and like how you understand things um i feel like even though the book was written in like the early 80s 82 maybe or something like that um some of the underlying themes I think are very relevant to even today. Uh, just like there's some religion and, um, 
you know, again, women empowerment and um, it, it, it's great. Anyway, it's the, the tale of King Arthur, if you don't know about the series. Um, from the female perspective, all about the Lady of the Lake, uh, Morgane. And then, so I'm listening to that. I still have like maybe 10 hours left. It's like a 60 hour listen on Audible. And that's um by and that's narrated by Davina Porter. And thank you all for commenting and suggesting other books that she read because her voice is just the main one that came up is the Outlander series. Divine, yeah. So I don't know how many are in that series. A lot. But, okay. So that might be on my back my back burner. And I do sometimes. I don't know if anybody else does this, but I do sometimes listen to Audible books that I. I may not know the author or may not be 100% sold on the synopsis of the story, but because of the person that narrates it, it really like pushes me over the edge, you know, over the edge. Or, I think you, you know, would like me to do it. Outlander. Oh, I'm sure I would. I understand the concept. I had started watching the TV series, only got a couple episodes and I never continued. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. I'll give I might give it a try. Um because I do have some audible credits now because this has been taking me forever to listen to. Um uh, but it's great. I just I have a bunch, too, if you need them. I have 11. Oh, great. Just send them my way. I'm happy to. Anybody else want to send me their credits? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, and then I'm currently reading, uh, as a recommendation from Kevin, um, The Glass Throne. Well, Glass... I didn't recommend it because well, I've never read it. Right, but you recommended the series because Sarah J. Moss has kind of been everywhere right now because she released uh, an, another series. I can't remember. In her... Crescent City series Crescent she City. received or released rather the third and final book in that trilogy yeah okay so this is Throne of Glass by Sarah J Moss I believe there are three books no there's about seven I believe there are seven books in this series um and that one is complete okay great it's again her writing is great um it re- does remind me of the first book in the court of thorns and roses where you're learning about these characters um there's a little bit of a um you know who should she end up with kind of situation relationship building um always a love triangle huh yeah and then the main character also kind of coming into her own um the this one specifically the main character is an assassin who is pretty much world famous um was so good nobody knew if she was a female if it was a female or a male or you know or, or whatever um ended up getting caught and being put into like slave labor camp kind of situation in this like mine the prince the king of the realm decides that they want to have their own champion um and their own like king's assassin type of situation so she is chosen as the prince's represent representative uh to compete in this competition of who can become the king's champion but she hides her the the prince wants her to hide her identity um and so gives her a false name and, and moves her into the castle to take part in this competition but there's um there's some murders that are taking place in this castle she's you know she's because she's been in this camp uh or in these mines she's kind of wasted away so she's retraining i love those stories you know where somebody's coming back to power you know or or learning and, and like growing and stuff almost like an origin yeah story so it almost people. feels like it. even though her past has already been established right she's like been this big figure um it's kind of cool to see her change and um the relationships are good it's a lot of humor which i appreciate um and we're we're really at the climax right now in the story i've probably about an hour left so i'm excited about that i will continue the series i do recommend it again i like her as an author i think that sarah j moss does a great job Mm -hmm. um i think that's all i have okay so i have finished my 12 books spellbound paranormal cozy mystery series so i finished books eight nine and ten those are a drop in the potion hemlocked and loaded in all spells break loose so this one there was everything was resolved for the most part there's one thing i i wish that kind of happened that didn't but um yeah it's resolved it was I enjoyed it, but I didn't enjoy reading it all at once. Mm-hmm. That's the type of series I feel like you really need that break because it's 
the structure of the books is very repetitive. You know, like, here's your main character. This is the murder. And then she's a lawyer. Here's the murder that happens that she's going to try to solve. And then here's her client for the week type of thing. You know, so... It was it was what it was. It sounds like a like a series, like a TV show serial kind of. You know? Yes, and there Every is a week second is a different murder or something. As far as I know, there's a whole nother spinoff of this that takes place immediately after the events of this one. I'm not doing that right now. Good for you. There's nine books in that that I'm aware of. I don't even know if it's complete. So that is that. Um, so that I've been reading on the Kindle. That's my nighttime read. And my daytime read. Nice. My daytime read. Oh, guys, I just want to see if I had finished this last time. You definitely did okay. not finish the second one. So, my daytime read. I have also finished A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Moss. It was really good. So I will. So the other day on Thursday, I was reading in the morning. And what I've been doing is, I think I mentioned this last time. I'm in the mornings. I'm trying to spend less time on my phone. So I've been reading. So I have a physical copy of the book. I hang out on the couch with my coffee and I read for an hour in the morning. Thursday that didn't happen. I read all damn day. Like I, I had to finish the book. I got to a specific part in it and I was like, "Crap! Here we go again. I can't put it down." So, like, I read, stopped for a bit, like, did whatever I needed to do to have the day be accomplished, and then came home and finished reading it. Like, Ray came home Thursday. I was like, don't talk to me. Like, I need, hi, welcome home. Let me just finish this because I had, like, 20 pages left. Um, It was really good. I am thoroughly enjoying the series. I'm looking at the next book over here, A Court of Wings and Ruin, and that thing is a beast. It looks like it's like three inches wide. <laughs> I, no. It's got to be close to a thousand pages. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so much happens in it. It's You're going to love it. It's really it's, good. Book, book two was so good. Like There was so much that happened in that book and so much character development and like... It's one of those stories where there are people, your feelings towards people change, and so many different characters mm-hmm. changes so much throughout the book where you're like, oh, I like you. Then you're like, oh, I don't like you. Oh, I like you. Or you're like, I hate you. Now I like you. I hate you. Now I like you again. So that type of thing happens through it. It's um, The world building is fantastic. Mm-hmm. I think she does a really good job with her world building. Um, this series is all about the fae and fairies and human realm. And, um, there's a very long history. It takes like the history of it goes back at over 500 years. So a lot happens and I would highly recommend it. And then my nighttime read now is a new book. I needed something that wasn't cozy, but I also wanted something that wasn't, fantasy so i went with thriller and i couldn't mystery. do this at a nighttime as a nighttime um movie. i am currently reading and this book is it's quite good the it was the synopsis that drew me in i'm reading the silent patient by alex michael michaelites i believe so this is a book that is told from a psychotherapist, I believe. Yeah, he's a psychotherapist. And one of his patients, um, her name is Alicia, and she, we are led to believe that she um, killed her husband. Both of these, her and her husband were both well-known artist, her for her painting, him for his fashion photography, um, and on the outside seemed to be incredibly happy. And one night she, we're led to believe that she kills him Mm. in their home. And 
She has not spoken since, and it's seven years later, and she still has yet to say a word. The only way that she has communicated at all was that she did another painting immediately after when she was released on like house arrest. Mm -hmm. She painted, and she painted an image of herself. And it was a painting, an image of herself painting. So weird. And I forget the title of the of the painting itself but that's the only thing that she's communicated in these seven years um and you know she has made um some attempts on her own life so there's definitely some trigger warnings in there there's a lot of um i don't know it's actually quite good so far i'm i'm i just started reading it to no, Wednesday night I started reading. I'm, I'm about like 30 to 40% in now, I think. Um, and what's really interesting is you're reading from her therapist's perspective. Yeah. And you learn a lot about his life and his therapy that he needs and how messed up in the head he is. And then you're also reading journal entries from her prior to these events. So I don't know. Um, and it's interesting because she cuts her thought off in a couple of them. Like, no, I'm not going to go there. Mm-hmm. And like literally writes that and then it ends. So you don't really know where her thought process is going either. But I know a couple people who've read it who said it's really good. Um, they told me on Thursday night. So mm-hmm. that is what I've been reading. Great. And I think that's it. I think so too. So don't forget, we still have the kid along going on. And on March 10th, we will start the mm-hmm. clockwork. Stephen West Clockwork Shawl, knit along and yeah, and keep an eye on our Instagram. We'll have the um, we'll we'll make an initial post on Instagram on the tenth on the tenth with the hashtag that we're going to use and some extra details and stuff. And I'm sure we'll, we you know we may have prizes. We're not sure. Let's just do it as a let's just something fun. Yeah, do it as something fun. I think it will be uh, like really clever. And then if we get a prize, we get a prize. You know, we have yeah we. I have, mean, we have prizes. We have prizes. Don't, you don't need to send us anything. Thank you very much. Um, We've got plenty to share. So with that being said, I think that is a wrap on this episode. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us and hope that you have a good two weeks and we will see you in a fortnight. Bye. Bye, guys.